This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Stick around until the end of the video to find out more. Hey there guys. So it turns out my last full follow along functional workout was really popular. Lots of people asked for more, so here you go. One of the most common requests was from a similar workout that you could do at home. My last one included sprinting, lizard crawling, tree branches. So this is one you can do from the comfort of your living room and still get a lot of the same benefits. This has created a bit of a challenge when it comes to the filming. My home is fairly small, covered in kids' toys and generally not that cinematic or conducive to filming with my preferred tighter lenses. So apologies if some of the shots are a little more rough around the edges than my other content. I also want to show that this can be done with zero equipment. This is a workout that everyone can build up to, so that means we're going to need to get creative with training, particularly when it comes to the lats and the biceps, but you'll see that it is possible. I'll also be talking through the video again. Hopefully you'll learn a couple of things and I can explain my reasoning with the exercise selection, etc. These types of videos offer a great opportunity to demonstrate just how to apply the various concepts and exercises I've discussed into an actual training plan. Right now I'm warming up with some 100 ups, aka high knees. I made a whole video on these. I'm gonna do two sets of one minute each. The first one I'm starting fairly gentle. The second one I'm bringing the knees up a bit higher, going a bit harder. The 100 up is a fantastic exercise for building the hip flexors and for building hip stability. It's also great for ankle stiffness, just like jump rope. And it'll build your calves a little bit. Of course, we're using it mainly here for its cardio benefits and to get the blood flowing around the body, warming us up nicely. The 100 up was developed by Walter George, a runner, as a way for him to train running in his spare time. Apparently, this technique allowed him to become one of the most decorated runners of his time. It's a great alternative to something like jump rope because you can do it in this small space with no worries about smashing everything off of your TV stand. Just do go easy on your ankles as you get a bit faster. This is a warm up and the main job is to get blood flowing to the joints and around your body. So don't hammer your toes into the ground and end up hurting your ankles. I do this a lot, but if you don't, you can start much slower or even do a kind of power walk on the spot, which is known as the 100 up minor. I'm resting for just 30 seconds between rounds. Now on to our active stretches to improve mobility for the impending workout. As I've said before, stretching pre-workout isn't always the best if you're using passive stretches. There is some evidence to suggest that this can increase your injury risk. However, A, this is blown massively out of proportion, and B, if we're using more controlled active mobility, that is getting into those positions and using our strength, then we don't have those same risks. So first up is the deep squat for one minute. This is an absolute staple and something everyone should be working towards. Try and keep your heels flat on the floor, weight distributed evenly over your feet and your back as straight as possible. Throughout all these movements, make sure to keep breathing in a calm manner. This will not only help you to release unwanted tension and to thereby get more from the mobility training, but it will also help you to practice breathing more calmly as you exert yourself, something that can really help to improve your performance in other movements. Next, we're moving on to one minute of deep lunges, 30 seconds on each side. There's no need to rest between these. Here you're trying to get a stretch on the hip flexors predominantly. Again, get into that furthest position and then use your strength and control to move deeper and then back out and move around the area, undulating. If you guys are familiar with the way I do mobility work, you know I'm going to be getting near to the end range and then moving gently around in that position, not just holding one position. This is as much about building strength and control in these weaker positions as it is anything else. Once you do that, your body will relax to allow you to move more freely. So ostensibly this is the warm up. Practicing these mobility moves at the start of our training is getting the blood flowing to those areas and it's giving us a greater range of motion for when we actually perform the working sets later on. But we shouldn't just think of it like that. This is part of the workout. This isn't spinning our wheels. It's helping us to move better, reducing pain and stiffness, working on our proprioception, ultimately making us stronger, especially at those end ranges. Working out doesn't just mean building muscle. That's only part of the story. 
Next we're doing one minute of Cossack squats, 30 seconds for each side. These are a great movement for getting us into the frontal plane, moving side to side. They stretch and strengthen the hips, as well as the hamstrings. A quick tip is that you can choose to target the hamstrings more, or the hips more, by turning the extended foot to point up or to point forwards respectively. So if you rest on your heel and point the toes up, that will train your hamstrings more. If you point the toes forwards and keep your foot flat on the floor, that will train the hip abductors more. You can also choose to focus more on that leg or to put your back heel down flatter on the floor, training your ankle mobility a little bit there as well. Go easy on this one as it's easy to hurt yourself if you go too deep too soon. Our next mobility move is the crab reach, 30 seconds on each side. Get into crab position so that your hands are stacked under your shoulders and feet under your knees. Then raise your crotch to the heavens and try and create as flat a torso as possible. Then take one hand and reach across and behind you, over your head. Follow your hand with your eyes as you do. This actually makes a big difference. Are you enjoying this format guys? If so, I can do more like this in future. Let me know what you'd like to see. Some ideas I've had include a home workout including common gym equipment like dumbbells etc because I know most of you have dumbbells and we can do something a little bit more comprehensive that way. A follow along functional gym workout is another option where you know where you follow me around the gym and I'll show you how I use the equipment there in a more functional structured workout and maybe even a follow along train like Batman workout using a whole bunch of equipment like sandbags and things. Let me know in the comments which of those you like the sounds of and if that's something you'd like to see more of in future. I made a whole video on crabs if you want more info. This is a great way to develop some core stability while also building shoulder mobility and thoracic spine mobility. It's also our first movement in the rotational plane. We're not even finished with the warm up yet, and we've already covered all three planes. Not bad. <laughs> Finally, it's doorway openers for 45 seconds each. These serve to stretch open the shoulders nicely. Your job is to really feel this in the right places. Specifically, that means the lats and the pecs. Your job then is to find the position where you really feel that stretch and then try moving around that area. You can also push into the door frame more from that position, or you can try lifting your arm gently off. These are called lift offs. To do this, you should be moving into a greater range of motion than you're normally capable of. And this should be using your strength to accomplish that. These shoulder openers have been working really well for me, helping me to get a much straighter handstand, for example. For the longest time, I wasn't getting much benefit from my shoulder mobility work, but by really focusing on which antagonists I'm meant to be targeting, I've seen a rapid improvement. Other options include doing dislocates with a stick of some sort, or using a sofa to do similar openers while on your knees. While I think there's been an overreaction to the findings that passive stretches before my warm-up can be harmful, I would still advise a little caution here. This is the closest to a passive stretch out of these moves, so just be sure not to push too far and to keep an element of strength throughout. Now next up are some activation exercises. These are exercises that teach you the right movement patterns and that get you moving correctly for the following workout. We're starting with the one-legged bodyweight good morning, eight repetitions on each side for just one set. The idea is to hinge at the hips on one leg while reaching forwards with the same hand. You're also going to straighten the spare leg out behind you. You could argue this is more of a straight-legged deadlift, 
or maybe call it an anterior reach, which is probably the better and more accurate term. But either way, the aim is to get you hinging at the hips properly, which is important because we don't have any other hip hinges in this workout, and to help you keep your hips stable. Focus on keeping the back foot pointing downwards towards the ground as you raise it up. You'll be surprised at how this drifts for most people. I clearly have some hip issues to work through, and it's an ongoing process for me. Look at that back foot. It's appalling. Disgusting. Yeah. This is functional training, digging into the movement issues and setbacks that hold back your performance and dealing with them. And often fixing one issue can uncover several more. You can find that a tightness in your hip, for example, is expressed in your back, in your gait, causing knee pain or back pain. It's an ongoing, never-ending process. Isn't that fun? This will compound the benefits of the 100 ups as well to really improve your gait. It also gives us a little glute and hamstring training, although not a lot. It is very good for hamstring mobility though. The next activation exercise is the body weight reverse fly, also called an elbow press. You don't need a long rest between these two exercises, maybe 30 seconds to a minute. And we're going to do these ones for two sets of eight or RPE six. That means perceived rate of exertion six or giving it a six out of 10 effort. Again, we're trying to get the body to move correctly here, this time by activating the rhomboids and rear delts to help bring the shoulders back into a better position. We've got a lot of horizontal pushing in this workout and we don't have a pull up bar. So we need to do something for that horizontal pull. Lie flat on the ground and then bring the elbows back to drive the torso upwards. Focus on the shoulders, bringing the scapula back and pinching them together as you push yourself up. And what's important here is to recognize that different exercises in this workout have different functions. This is one thing that sets functional training apart. So the obvious criticism that I can anticipate some people making here is that you won't build big traps or big lats through this movement. It's a short range of motion, the resistance isn't that high, but that's not the point we'll be building strength and muscle soon enough. This is about activating the shoulder blades, seeing as many people don't even know how to do that and teaching ourselves better resting posture as a result. This is training the neural pathways and treating strength like a skill, same for anterior reaches. We're now moving on to a lat exercise for zero equipment, the body weight pullover for two sets of RPE eight. It's the first example of how we're going to get a little creative with what's available to us. So here you're going to keep your body rigid and rest on your knees again. Place both hands on the sofa with your arms stretched out overhead, straight. You should look like you're going to do a Jack LaLanne push-up. Now you're going to push down into the sofa with your hands in order to raise up your upper body. This is not a body weight tricep pushdown, so we're not bending the elbows. It's fine to have them bend a little, but you want to put that emphasis on the lats. The aim is to pull the arms straight down from the lats, which will drive your body upwards at the same time. It's a slightly awkward one and the range of motion isn't great, but it will certainly do better than nothing. And again, it comes down to your own ability to feel the exercise working the target muscles and to utilize that mind-muscle connection. So the responsibility here is on you to feel as though you're training the lats. Okay, enough messing around now. It's time for some serious work. Two times one-armed push-ups with a good one to three minute rest between sets, RPE eight. Again, I'm gonna be cutting out the rests, seeing as it would make for a very long and boring video, just watching me sit there do nothing. You can just pause the video for that necessary amount of time. For me, RPE eight is going to mean two sets of six. I'm gonna do about 10 maximum on a good day. So two sets of six is plenty challenging. This is building serious pec, shoulder and tricep strength. It's also a huge core workout as you'll need to stabilize your midsection to be able to transfer the strength into the ground. The best part is it's anti-rotation. That means you're combating gravity as it attempts to twist your unsupported side down to the ground. We're building more strength in the rotational plane then 
and this is some of the most functional strength there is. Whether you're running, pushing, pulling, throwing or punching, it's also something that many of us overlook in our regular training. To do the perfect one-armed push-up, you're going to spread your legs, but not too wide, which makes it easier. The closer together you can keep them, the better, but you'll be hard pushed to keep them directly next to each other. Now place your hand in the middle. Lower yourself with control and then push yourself back up once your nose touches or nearly touches the floor. Push all the way through so that you're extending your arm and protracting your scapula at the top. You might even hear your back crack, which is a great feeling. If you can't do a one-armed push-up, you can do regular push-ups. Better yet, place one hand on a raised object and then move more of your weight to the other hand. You can this way assist yourself and get a nice deep stretch for the pecs, which is a great stimulus. Now, if you thought that was enough for your pecs and shoulders, you've got another thing coming. Now we're heading over to the stairs to do a variation of a pike push-up that I think I invented. Tell me if you've seen this anywhere before. Two sets of RPE 8 and we're going to rest here for about a minute to two minutes. Anyway, the idea as you can see is to perform a pike push up but using the stairs to get yourself into position so your feet are on higher steps than your hands. It's going to be a little bit more diagonal than your usual pike push up this way but where it really comes into its own is in the way it allows it to go into a really deep deficit. You can lower yourself well past the floor and then push yourself back up. So you're going to go down diagonally, your chin's going to go past your hands and then keep going deeper and then you're going to push yourself up from there. I hope it goes without saying that you should do this so that your hands are on the bottom step. The only reason I'm not doing that is that I can't get a good camera angle that way. Be sensible and stop before you're at risk of dropping off injuring yourself. This should be a nice controlled movement, nice and slow. Watching this back I can see that I'm a little uneven. I think that's due to my hand placement, like I think one of my arms is more diagonal, but I do also have one stronger trap on my left side, so I'll be keeping an eye on this. Anyways, you do this, uh, but do it better please. If the movement is too hard, or you don't have stairs, then of course you can use a sofa to do regular pike push-ups. Or you can do the easier pike push-up variation on the ground. Now we're moving straight on over to another challenging pushing movement, these being pseudo planche push-ups. For another two times PRE8, with a longer two to three minute rest this time, whatever it takes for you to be fully recovered so that you can complete the same number on the second set. To perform a pseudo planche push-up, you're going to get into push-up position with your hands lower down your body and palms twisted so that your fingers point either outwards or back behind you, keeping your upper body pushed forwards over your shoulders. Push up at the top of the movement and make sure to lock the elbows all the way out. A good cue here is to drill your palms into the ground by turning them further outwards until the pit of your elbow opens out completely. This is actually a movement used in calisthenics to build straight arm strength. The aim is to strengthen the elbows and the scapula, building up to the planche. I'm not that great at this move, so I'm not leaning all that much. Furthermore, we've just done a whole bunch for the shoulders, so why are we doing it? Why is it here in the program? Well, one reason is that it can actually build big biceps and resilient elbows. This is not just an isometric hold for the biceps, it's also placing great strain on the biceps tendons. Gymnasts have huge biceps, partly because of all the straight arm training that they do. Just go very careful with this one again. Build up to it slowly. It's intense if you're not used to this kind of training. Simply turning your hands just a little outwards will do fine if you're struggling, or even just doing tricep push-ups to begin with. Okay, now on to more legs. So the first exercise we're going to do here is the pseudo shrimp squat. I mean, that's not an official title, but I don't know what else to call it. It's effectively between a shrimp squat and a kickstand squat. So a kickstand squat is a squat performed so that you essentially squat on one leg, resting the free leg though behind you with your toes on the ground to offer some balance and support. It's also though going to help with the actual movement a little bit, inevitably. 
this is the easier progression for this exercise. So if you can't do these pseudo shrimp squats, then this is where you're going to start. We're doing the same thing here, but we're going to raise the support leg so that it only comes into contact with the ground at the bottom of the squat, or so it's only very lightly touching the ground until the bottom of the squat. It's there just to add balance, to allow you to get into a more upright posture so that you can drive through the heel and really involve the glutes in the movement. While I can do a shrimp squat, it's not very elegant and I wouldn't want to pump out reps. This way, we're getting more support so that we can do 10 reps with some decent stability. And we can focus on building that ankle mobility, that single leg strength, and that glute and hamstring strength. Again, your job is to focus on driving the heel and to make sure you're engaging the target muscles. You can also do elevated pistol squats on your stairs with your heel on a book, but I wanted to show some variety. We did pistol squats last time. The big reason I've chosen the pseudo shrimp squat here is that it offers us a bit more challenge than a typical air squat, for example. Air squats are great, but they don't do enough to really build power or strength. Jump squats are better, but even those are limited when it comes to hypertrophy. They're great for building explosiveness, but there isn't much mechanical tension, muscle damage, or cross bridging to allow for growth. With that said, you can get a bit of a pump this way, especially if you then drop set to regular air squats. Taking your weight on one leg though, is a good way to do some real work. And on top of that, it's also going to build that symmetry between your legs and help you do better balance on one leg. These points are important for performance for obvious reasons. While perfect symmetry between legs is off the table, that's just not something that exists for anyone, we do want to close that gap as much as possible. If you're outputting slightly less force on one leg when running, this compounds over a long distance. So, how are you? I'm good. It's been my kids' birthdays, just weeks before Christmas, so I've been very busy and I haven't had much time for unwinding in the evenings. But when I do get a moment, I've been really enjoying Sonic Dream Team on the iPad, and I've been playing Duke Nukem on the Evercade. Specifically, I've been really enjoying playing the original Duke Nukem 1 and 2, which have been completely remastered in a widescreen format and with smooth 60 FPS scrolling. They're brilliant and it's like reliving my childhood. Let me know in the comments if any of you know what an Evercade is and if any of you played the original Duke Nukems before Duke Nukem 3D. Next up for the legs are sissy squats. I didn't come up with the name. This targets the quads in a big way, as well as strengthening the knees. That said, they're also very tough on the knees, so don't do these if you have existing issues. Instead, find an easier regression. Likewise, if you lack the strength for now, then find an easier regression. That easier regression is the Hindu squat, where you simply squat on your toes. You can do this with a partial range of motion too, if it's too difficult. I'm doing sissy squats with my hands near the sofa. This is just to support me as I get closer to the ground, giving me the stability I want in order to be able to build some strength and hypertrophy. Remember, stability is necessary for making strength gains. I said if you're more interested in the balance gains, you can try and ignore the support as much as possible. It becomes quite a cool party trick once you can do it without. Focus on driving your knees forwards towards the ground. So the sissy squat is in here because once again, it's a significantly challenging movement, even if you're training only with body weight. It isolates the quads really nicely. It also is great to have a knees over toes movement like this in here. We've all seen what they can do thanks to Ben Patrick. So if you can build up to sissy squats, they're going to give you both aesthetics and a better running speed and jump height perfect for functional training. I would have loved to have included Nordic curls as well, but it's pretty hard to do that in most homes as you need something just the right height to pin your legs under. Okay, one last exercise left, but it's a doozy. We're gonna finish on two rounds of burpees as a cardio finisher. This will elevate the heart rate and get us some of the many benefits of high intensity interval training. 
We're doing two rounds of 15 reps with a good two to three minute break in between. You should find that that's plenty. We're not doing this like they do in the military though. They will stop between each rep and pause before continuing to the next one. Rather, we're treating this as one continuous movement. Perform the push-up, jump up, tap your knees. Then as you hit the ground, immediately sprawl into the push-up. You're barely tapping the ground with your toes. This method removes that very short break and means the heart needs to work overtime in order to get the blood flowing from the legs to the upper body and back again. You'll find yourself panting and heart pounding very quickly. I also like this move as it's a full body exercise that ties together the upper and lower body. We have a bit of a tendency to train the upper and lower body like two separate entities, and this can result in a kind of disconnect, making it harder for us to generate power from the legs and drive through the arms. Here we're going directly from the feet to the arms and back again. The burpee also trains the whole body. You train the pecs, shoulders and triceps from the push-up, the core from maintaining a straight body, and the legs from the squat jump. You'll even get a little bit of lat work as you pull your legs up towards your hands. It's very minor, but given how tricky it is to hit the lats without equipment, it's still a bonus. This is a very high impact exercise when performed this way, however, and it will place a fair amount of strain on the joints, especially the ankles, knees and lower back. I don't recommend this for anyone who is currently struggling with joint pain or who isn't somewhat athletic. Other solid options include high repetition push-ups or just jump squats. You can also perform a burpee without the jump, using either a squat or just standing up. Scale this to your level and take it slowly as always. To finish, you're just going to walk on the spot for two to five minutes until your heart rate calms back down. The aim is to get the blood flowing back where you want it, so you don't feel dizzy or sick. Again, you don't need me to show you how to walk on the spot for two minutes, so this is a good point to break. That said, do try and concentrate on lifting those knees up high and keeping those hips level. If you want to see an entire training plan that goes into far more depth and that can be scaled to any level with various different types of equipment, then check out my ebook and training program, Super Functional Training 2.0. That comes with over two hours of footage and an 80 plus page ebook. It's designed to make you faster, stronger, more mobile, even mentally sharper all at once. So you don't have to choose. Link in the description down below. Either way, thank you so much for watching guys and I'll see you next time. Bye for now. This video was sponsored by Squarespace. Squarespace is a website building platform that's ideal for hobbyists all the way up to massive corporations. It makes the process of getting started extremely quick and easy while still offering all of the top level features you might need. To get started, you just need to choose a template that you like and then customize it to meet your needs and preferences. Customization is an extremely simple drag and drop process. The end result will be something that's completely personalized while looking modern and highly professional. This whole process takes minutes, and from there, you'll be ready to start posting content and sharing it with the world, thanks to the in-depth formatting and editing options. Create beautiful content to post or schedule it to post later. You also get seamless social media integration to share your work with a wider audience or to publish your social posts directly to your site. There's a fully featured commenting system too, so that you can build your own community right on your site with threaded comments, replies, and likes. Other features include gated members-only content, e-commerce tools, analytics, and much more. And if you want to take this further, you can install one of the countless plugins. For example, you can add inventory management, global shipping, and more to your e-commerce solution. Squarespace makes it simple for anyone to create an online presence, something that is absolutely crucial in the digital economy. Head to squarespace.com to find out more, or go to squarespace.com forward slash Bioneer for 10% off your first domain or website. Thanks again to Squarespace, thanks to you guys, and bye for now.